On the 10th of March, elections, parliamentary elections, were held in Portugal, producing a number of surprises. To discuss what this means for the country and for its role in Europe, I, my next guest joins me. So, Luis Freitas, welcome to TVP World. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, thank you, thank you for the invitation. Uh, yes, as you correctly mentioned, these elections were uh, brought a lot of new developments in, in Portuguese politics. Uh, the one of the, or maybe I'll talk about the winners and losers in the in the election. Uh, the probably the for sure the biggest loser in this sorry, case. Sorry, may, sorry to interrupt you. Just before we get to that, and we definitely will. What brought the elections about at this time? Is this in the normal cycle, or was there an unexpected event? No, it was an unexpected event. Uh, it uh, it happened when there were uh, justice uh, issues. Uh, hypothetically criminal issues related to the uh, former government, the, to the socialist government. Uh, and uh, the former prime minister, Antonio Costa, said that uh, uh, a prime minister and a government that faces these kind of accusations uh, should... Uh, uh, should not, well, he said uh, kind of a double. Uh, he, he said two things that somewhat contradict each other because he said that on one hand he should not be in government if there are these accusations in the justice system, but on the other hand, um, he he also gave uh, a person that w could substitute him to the president, which was the uh, which was Mario Centeno, a, a former president of the Eurogroup. Um, so. Uh, this, this, uh, what this was what uh, started this, right. this problem, uh, uh, these elections, and uh, and the results were somewhat not predicted, right? To some so, extent. So, so, so what are the rules? Uh, this parliamentary election, there are two hundred and thirty seats uh, available. I understand, but no one got an absolute majority. Is that correct? Y yes. So, what happened? Uh, the. the there's a very divided parliament uh, because on the one hand you have the center left and the far left that have uh, reached agreements in the past with the what's called the contraption government which is the government of the so socialist party but with par only with parliamentary support of the far left uh, and they they there are negotiations of trying to do this again but on the other hand the right-wing parties, both centre-right and far-right, have a majority. The thing is, there, there's also a divorce in the in the right uh, right-wing sector, which because the centre-right said, in at least in the campaign, that they, they will not negotiate with the with the far-right, uh, uh, far-right or radical right. Uh, so there is a very big division. Uh, what people, of course, we, it's important to say that we are still waiting for the results of the international vote that uh, constitute the four seats. Uh, but the situation may change a little bit, but not to a great extent. Um, but then the issue is how uh, how will the center, if the center right can negotiate with the far right? Uh, of course, uh, it's important also to say that our the far right in Portugal is uh, kind of different from, uh, for example, far right in France or in Germany or even in Italy, because they are pro European Union, they are pro uh, even pro euro currency, pro Ukraine. To, uh, so. Um, but at the same time, they have very radical ideas. Uh, uh, um, so it can create, for sure, it, it creates a tension between uh, center right and far right. Uh, but what the center right parties have been saying is that maybe there can be some understanding when it comes to some economic policies, like in lowering taxes, facilitating uh, the building of houses, um, making sure that both public, private, and, and uh, social sector can also help in the, in the relative crisis that exists in the health sector and also in education. Um, so it all depends on how the parties will be able to manage uh, parliamentary support, either right. coming from left or, right, or the right. Right. Uh, so, so, I mean, the, the, the party that won the most seats, the Democratic Alliance, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, 
and the Socialist Party, which was previously in, in power, is now in second pl uh, place with uh, Chega, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, in third place. And this is the far right party you're, you're talking yes, about. Yes. So is there, I mean, is there any alternative for the Democratic Alliance apart from some kind of coalition with, with Chega? I mean, is there space for them to work with the Socialist Party? Uh, there have been uh, uh, some people in the parties that say that uh, there should be a closer negotiation with the Socialist Party because they're the two biggest parties in Parliament. And there have, be, uh, there have been, uh, in the Portuguese uh, democratic history, there have been cases where that happened. Uh, so I probably the Democratic Alliance will have to search for uh, partners in... Uh, E e on, on particular cases. Uh, right. Uh, so uh, maybe when it comes to e economic policy, it will go more to the liberal initiative, which is like a free market party, it, or maybe even to Chega, to the far right. When it comes to other issues, uh, maybe in the reform of the state, there, there could be some agreements with the Socialist Party. So uh, it, will be, uh, it will possibly be a, a government of... Uh, temporary and local negotiations according to we, to which... Uh, and local uh, alliances and so on. It, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so, I mean, the, the voter turnout was 67%, the highest since 1995. What is it that people are unhappy about? I think uh, there's quite a few areas that I believe people were somewhat unha unhappy about. It was uh, housing, there's uh, an issue that has also been brought here in the past in TVP world. Uh, there has been uh, uh, the somewhat, uh, for example, the, the fact that countries in Eastern Europe, for example, Poland or others, have passed uh, Portugal in the Human Development Index and in GDP per capita. Um, so we're kind of uh, feeling that uh, these countries are doing better than us. So we would have... Uh, the people are somewhat uh, upset that, of course, they want their country to grow uh, as much as possible. Um, there's an issue with health because the f former uh, government tried to uh, somewhat push everything to the public sector. And, uh, of course, when uh, a person faces a health crisis, the, uh, sometimes they don't care if it's from the public or private or the social. They, they just want their health to be taken care of. Uh, so the the Socialist Party kind of pushed everything to the public sector, and the c public sector c kind of wasn't able to deal with everything. Right, right. Uh, so a, a, a large number of, of social issues uh, brought uh, brought about this change. Well, it'd be very interesting to see how how the uh, how Parliament actually uh, fashions itself, uh, and the alliances that come along. Please do keep us informed. Do come back and see us soon, Louise. Thank you very much for your insight. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.